shuttered shops, towns dying from the inside, jobs destroyed, communities torn apart. Are you scared about the future of your high street? Could you lose out on the products you love? Might your town or city change beyond recognition? Will you, or the people you care about, soon be out of a job? Ever since the first online shopping boom of the late 1990s, brick and mortar retail has been on a long, slow, and probably inevitable slide towards its death. And we're constantly told we should be terrified of the oncoming retail apocalypse. Politicians never lose the opportunity to stand up for the high street. Old school business leaders give stony faced warnings about the future of their stores. And as shops close and transport shuts down in the coronavirus pandemic, the warnings and the desperate calls for the government to do something came faster and faster. But what if I was to tell you that that fear is only holding us back? Holding our politicians back from thinking about a future that's best for all of us, not just big businesses. Holding the market back from bold new ideas that can make our lives richer and better. Holding you back from that kind of innovative thinking that you'll need if you're going to get rich. Because the truth is, brick and mortar retail is dying. And in this video, you'll learn why. Why the high street as you know it is a lost cause. Why even untouchable retailers like Primark are going to go under. But you'll also learn why this isn't actually the apocalypse. It's a chance for new birth. Brick and mortar retail has always been the favorite child of the politicians and until recently, big business too. E-commerce has been the black sheep of the family. But if you can break free of the mindset of the old retailers and the politicians, if you can let go of a dead vision of the high street, you can open up the path to creating an amazing new future for everybody and a whole lot of success for yourself. Keep watching to find out how. Thank you for coming. I'll see you in hell. Part one, overconfident and uninspired. The story of HMV. Firstly, I want you to join me on a journey back to the 1980s. Madonna's dominating the charts, it's illegal to go out without shoulder pads, and British business is on steroids as the economy booms. And one business that's riding the wave is the titan of the high street, HMV. Now, in the old days, if you wanted a game or a movie or a record, you couldn't stream it. You couldn't even order it on Amazon. You had to go to an actual shop. How incredibly exhausting. If you lived in the UK, chances are the shop was HMV, which dominated music and later other entertainment retail in Britain throughout much of the late 20th century. But through the noughties and the 2010s, HMV struggled and ultimately fell. With people increasingly looking online for their music, the brick and mortar retailer couldn't keep up. In this part of the video, I'm gonna show you how HMV's rise was driven by technology-driven innovations, but its demise was caused by the exact same thing. And by the end of this section, you'll understand why the mightiest brick and mortar stores can crumble when they take their eye off the ball. Now, HMV was founded in 1921 and it enjoyed several periods of big success and growth. But the 1980s was when it really saw off rival record store chains by latching itself to the success of an existing new technology, the compact disc or CD. The biggest revolution in the recording industry since the invention of the long playing gramophone record. Now for my younger viewers, remember those ancient CDs that's probably still in your dad's car? Once they were a cutting edge entertainment trend, like the iPod in the noughties or Spotify in the 2010s. People were willing to pay big money for them. And HMV ensured that it was the go-to place to spend that money with a big fat profit margin on top. That was the one thing that HMV got right. It was willing to go all in on this cool new tech and it dominated as a result. And it had to think big, bold and innovative to do this. It pioneered celebrity in-store appearances to make itself into a destination for shoppers. Paul McCartney, Michael Jackson, Madonna, David Bowie and Kate Bush all turned up to play gigs and sign CDs. That kind of celebrity cameo was really rare before HMV made it a thing. But in the late 90s and early noughties, there was a new threat around. It was called 
the internet. Amazon started selling CDs in 1998. In 2003, the Apple iTunes store opened to let you legally download songs. And for years previously, the popularity of sites like Napster or LimeWire had showed a clear demand for quick digital content. All of this should have been no sweat for HMV. The innovative business that spotted and latched onto the rise of the CD should have had no problem shifting to this new reality. Well, if you thought that, you'd be wrong. In 2002, HMV's ad agency warned the company's managing director that the two of his biggest threats were downloadable music and online retailers. His response? According to one of the guys working at the agency, he said, I've never heard so much rubbish. And that's the one big thing HMV got wrong. Because it got lazy and overconfident, it missed the big technology trend of this century. From there, it was all downhill. Nowadays, you can still find a few HMV shops, but the company entered administration twice, once in 2013 and once in 2018. It's pretty much certain that it'll never enjoy a major success again. And here's the thing, HMV didn't just lose out for itself. It also missed out on the chance to make your life and my life better. It missed out on that kind of innovation that Amazon, Apple, Spotify, and more embraced in order to bring more music into our lives more quickly. The Krusty Krab, come spend your money here! Part two, sinking the unsinkable. Why Primark is next. Fast forward back to the present day, and the preacher is pretty different to how it was in the early noughties. Nobody would dismiss online shopping as rubbish. About 10% of all retail sales were online as of 2019, and with stores closing for lockdowns across the world, the figure for 2020 will probably be much bigger. But people still can't quite believe that the high street's doom is inevitable. And often, one name they hold up is the budget clothing retailer Primark. I'm going to explain why they're wrong, and what's more, I'm going to tell you why it's actually a good thing. Primark is a champion compared to the other brick and mortar retailers. During 2019, its profits rose by 8% year on year. So what's its secret? It's not cool. It isn't beautiful. But it is very, very cheap. Unlike HMV, where even back in the 1980s people forked out 16 or 17 pounds for a CD, at Primark you can pick up a huge basket at the door and stuff clothes into it, often for just a few pounds each. Now there's lots of reasons why Primark is able to keep its prices low. It doesn't do much advertising, it only buys stock that it thinks it can sell, and once it's gone, it's gone. But one of the reasons why it's so cheap is it doesn't sell online. That means it doesn't have to invest in all the complex and expensive systems and processes that come with an online arm. Now, maybe that sounds smart. Primark is selling only in brick and mortar stores because that's what it knows, while its high street competitors try to focus online and offline at once. But the onward march of technology is like gravity. You cannot escape it forever. Primark can become more and more dominant on the brick and mortar high street, but that won't save it when the brick and mortar high street is dying overall. If you look at Primark's success in 2019, those big new profits were driven by aggressive expansion into new locations. Its year on year sales at existing established stores were actually down. Plus of course, the brick and mortar high street is now vulnerable to shocks. Anyone remember that little thing called coronavirus? You must stay at home. During the depths of the lockdown in the UK where shops were forced to close their doors to stop the virus spreading, Primark sales were zero. Literally zero. Perhaps the world will never see another pandemic like that in our lifetime. But even if that were the case, lockdown was basically a very extreme version of a basic reality. For brick and mortar stores to make money, people have to be able to move about. That's why even when the weather is unusually bad, sales go down. Online retailers don't have that problem. So Primark at the end of the day is just another HMV. It's winning the retail game with the existing rules in the physical world. But the game is changing and Primark can't stop it. If it doesn't start learning the new rules, it's gonna lose badly. Now this is bad news, right? Who doesn't like cheap clothes? I'd argue that's not the case. 
If cheap clothes are what you want, newer, online-only, fast fashion brands like Boohoo are able to respond to changes even faster than Primark to get what you want. For example, while Primark was doing precisely nothing during lockdown, Boohoo was bringing customers cheap pajamas and leisure wear for those hours that they were spending lying around the house. Part 3. A New Birth. Life After the Retail Apocalypse. Picture a new kind of town centre. Instead of bland chain shops, you've got houses, parks, schools. Local stores have their place, but so does leisure, community and friendship. In this section, I'm going to show you that this doesn't have to be just a fantasy. Because Boohoo's cheap leisure wear during lockdown is just one example why online can win over brick and mortar retail. I'm going to explain why shoppers will win out in the current changes to retail. But more than that, I'm going to explain why a new future for the high street is actually better for society too. Like a phoenix rising Harry Potter style from the ashes. The key point? It's all about innovation. Innovation is what makes successful new e-commerce businesses stand out. And that's good for those businesses, but it's also good for consumers. Unlike HMV clinging to the CD or Primark sticking to its budget stores, big online retailers like Amazon are always moving fast and changing the game. If we take Amazon and compare it to Walmart, which does sell online, but it still has brick and mortar stores in its DNA. If you live in the US, Walmart has brought you cheap groceries and other goods, and that's not for nothing. But Amazon has brought you access to products you once could barely have accessed. Amazon has pioneered the way we read books. Through Amazon's web services, it's helped a range of tech companies and even governments provide online services. You might think these companies are too big, and I discussed this in one of my other videos on Amazon. But I'd pick Amazon over a big and boring company like Walmart any day. Meanwhile, some people argue that whatever the benefit to consumers, the death of brick and mortar retail means the death of high streets and town centers, the destruction of jobs, the loss of community. But that's not the case. There again, a lack of innovation is just holding us back. A new report by the British think tank called the Social Market Foundation reveals that if politicians would just stop trying to save dead high streets with old-fashioned policies, they could convert the space that's being used for doomed retail into 800,000 new homes across the UK. And that could come alongside new parks and community spaces. Plus, of course, building that many homes creates plenty of good, worthwhile jobs. So when you hear about people warning about the retail apocalypse, and how if more stores go under we're all doomed, don't think like HMV. Don't think like Primark. Don't think like the politicians. Instead, think like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. Think about building something totally new and not hanging on to the old. And that's the key to improving people's lives and the key to improving society. And it's the key to not only getting rich, but staying at the top of your game too.